the Salento Peninsula. Located in Puglia, it is the heel of Italy. The peninsula is known for its endless coastline and azure seas. It's a land that's been occupied by the Greeks, Romans, Arabs, and Norms. You can definitely see the Arabic yeah. influence here. The sun-baked plains of the region produce close to half of Italy's olive oil. In the past, the region was known for producing massive amounts of bulk wine. But now, that's changing. There's a quality wine revolution happening in Salento, backed by passionate producers. Join us as we go behind the scenes and dig deeper into the food, wine, and people behind the new Salento. It's all in the latest episode of Exotic Wine Travel. Lecce is the capital of Salento. It's been dubbed the Florence of the South thanks to its well-preserved old town. The city is home to nearly 100,000 inhabitants and is known for its exquisite Baroque architecture. The many civilizations that pass through Lecce have all left their mark. It's here that we meet up with our guide for the week, Stefano Spagnolo of Salento Wine Tour and Salento Wine Shop. He's a man that is enthusiastic about the food and wine of his homeland. After the city tour, he takes us to his house for a couple of specialties from Puglia. First up, fresh burrata cheese made of mozzarella and cream. Next is a local pasta that's found all around the world. Pasta or orecchiette with rabe. This is a typical dish of Salento. This ear-shaped pasta soaks up the sauce perfectly. Our trip's off to a delicious start. Southern Italians are crazy about their pastries, savory and sweet. Our local favorite is the rustico a speciality of Lecce. It's made with tomato and cheese, wrapped in a filo dough. It makes a perfect breakfast. We need it because the usually sunny Salento Peninsula is cloud-covered and rainy today. Our first stop is Tenute Emre, founded by Claudio Corta, who produces wines in Salento and Campania. Their Primitivo di Mendoria made Wine Spectator's Top 100 Wines of 2016. His daughter Alessandra is now taking over the estate and has agreed to give us a retour. It's a retour because we first visited the estate during the summer of 2018, when the vineyards were green. The vines are less than a kilometer from the Ionian Sea, and you can easily find fossils in the vineyards. Claudio used to be in biotech and started an experimental vineyard project with the Italian government. We have um, the collection of biodiversity with over 500 uh, different varieties from all the Mediterranean area. Can you list a couple of the countries that you work with? Like Georgia, Turkey, uh, Greece, even Italy. Even forgotten uh, uh, varieties from southern Italy. Mm -hmm. We revisit the cellar with Alessandra and find it exactly as we remember it. Clean, orderly, and tourist friendly. She tells us about the philosophy behind the estate and why she wanted to take over. So give emotions to people who taste wines. That was uh, his uh, mission. Um, and be able to attract new consumers to these areas due to the wines. My father decided to change his life when he was about to turn 50. So he, f he came here to look for the best area. What I like about wine is that it's also a mean of um, spreading culture. Uh, I was working at UNESCO, so I really loved uh, the idea of managing culture. But then one day I went to Vinitaly and I saw what my dad had built and the philosophy that was behind it. And, and I was just astonished from how beautiful and uh, full of energy and colors and stories and flavors, the world of wine is. In nearby Salice Salentino, the family has a project called Cantino Moros. <laughs> the cellar has a museum and produces only one wine, which is one of our favorite examples of Negro Amaro, the Moros Salice Salentino Reserva. So this is the 2016, which is what we're presenting right now. It's brand new. You're among the first ones to taste it. I really like the nose, it's very spicy, but you got a ton of fruit as well, black and red fruit, both of them. It's earthy. Yeah, and really it's... smooth entry on the palate, and then the tannins grips you, but really softly. We're hungry and now it's time to eat. 
Alessandra takes us to nearby Osteria di Monacizzo. It's a humble place run by a couple who produce traditional plates from Salento. Historically, this was a poor region, so people had to use alternatives to meat, like this tagliatelle with chickpeas. Without the meat, the chickpeas still gives this roundness and savoriness to the food. Grazie a me fa male. The village of Cutrofiano is home to Palama Winery, headed up by third generation winemaker Michele Palama. Michele has a few new projects, including restoring an old vineyard and a future tasting room to share the beauty of Salento with visitors. Um, at the moment, uh, we are, the market is full of great wines, so it's really easy to drink a great wine. What is not easy is to drink a real wine. Mm -hmm. Back in the cellar, we meet Michele's father and taste some of the bulk wines that Palama sells to the locals. It's good for, good for tap wine? It's great, it's great. I mean, it's clean, it's aromatic, you know, it's refreshing. There's no microbiological thought to it at all. And that's what people should be enjoying, yeah. We do a quick tour of the cellar before starting the tasting. The flagship wines of the estate are the Matushko bottlings, made from indigenous grapes. Uh, Matushko was the first one that we started to make uh, in 1996. The red one was a blend of the three most important native varieties of our area, Negro Amaro, Malvasina di Lecce and Primitivo, and was the same blend that my grandfather has used to make for all his life. Uh, something not really expensive that everyone can buy and that everybody, everyone can drink. It's an important part of our production, it's an important part of our story. Metusco is also something really funny. Uh, Metusco is a verb that, co that means I get drunk. Uh, so... <laughs> okay, Michele. Cheers, thank you so much. Cheers. Now it's time to drink. We run through the rest of the portfolio until we get to the 75 Vendemia Negro Amaro. This is really a perfect blend of, of the fruit of Negro Amaro with the modern structure that the French oak gives. You definitely still get the pepper, kind of the Mediterranean herbs and spices that you get from Negro Amaro. But the French oak gives it a little bit of polish, a little bit of yeah, roundness. Yeah, it's true. Negro Amaro means black and bitter. So black is the characteristic of the color that you can feel in this glass. Bitter, it's a characteristic of our tannins. Cave of Poetry. The Cave of Poetry and City of Otranto are among the big tourist draws of the Adriatic coast. We don't have time for the beach though. We're heading to Il Vecchio Molo for lunch. This fresh fish restaurant has been a long time staple in San Foca. It's run by the chef Davide in addition to his wife, Daniela, who acts as the sommelier. She opens a few rosatos and we start with our first dish. Raw cod, also known as bacalao. Yeah, I like it. It's very good. So raw fish, it's very easy to think about freshness. But what is often overlooked is actually how to cut the fish. The dishes keep coming, but it's the Gambara Rosso, Burrata and Sea Urchin that gets Shireen really excited. It's all my favorite thing. Gambola from Gallipoli, it's violet gambola. Was, uh, see, was working. Just eat it so good. After a long lunch, it's time for dessert, coffee, and a local digestive. Why not just ask for a triple espresso next time? <laughs> uh, typical digest that you find in uh, sorry that uh, you find in uh, Salento is with laurel, <laughs> The old structure of the wall. Copertino is home to one of the largest castles in Puglia. This defensive structure was built during the Norman period in the 16th century. The town is also home to Vidi Vinicola Moruli. The winery used to focus on bulk wine, but it has shifted towards quality bottled wines. Proprietor Vito Moruli starts our visit with a tour of his vineyards. Malvasia Nera e Negro Amaro. It's been a rainy spring, so we use plastic bags to trod through a vineyard of old vines, which go into the winery's top wine, Menone. Negro Amaro del Menone. Some of these vines are over 80 years old. Bye, bye. Okay, so we go to see go, go. the most beautiful uh, bush of Salento. 
Barulli started producing bottled wine in the 1990s and already produces some impressive juice, including their rosato. What's really special and makes it what people call the gastronomy rosato here is because it's got really nice weight in the mouth. When it enters, it's very expressive, it's got intensity, it has the weight in the mouth, and when it's made from Negro Amaro, it has a bit of the hint of spiciness. That's just beautiful. We're also impressed with the entry-level red, but for us, it's all about the Maruli Menone, Old Vine Negro Amaro Aging Concrete Tanks. We've tasted the 2013 before, but today Vito opens his favorite vintage, the 2012. Energetic. Almost a little bit feisty, you know, tannins, acidity, lots of food. Molto semplicemente, il menone non è altro che un, uh, il frutto di una coincidenza forza. Nel 2005 noi abbiamo acquisito un vecchio vigneto uh, del Brello Pugliese, eh, quindi di varietà Negramaro. Dalla nostra prima vinificazione, quindi dalla nostra prima vendemmia, ci siamo resi conto che questo, eh, questo vigneto portava con sé un, un patrimonio che difficilmente riuscivo a riscontrare negli altri negramari eh, vinificati e vendemmiati all'interno della nostra azienda. It's a wine that Stefano also loves. It's a, a incredible. <laughs> you like Menone? I like Menone. This is for me Menone time. It's got a beautiful coriander seed, Jerusalem chalk, very complex aroma. On the palate, it's very precise. It's surprising for a Southern Italian wine you're thinking about finesse, but finesse is what you get here. The finesse and the tannins go hand in hand from the front palate to the end, and the cherry, the silkiness follow you through the palate. This Negramaro a me mi ha sempre entusiasmato per un semplicissimo motivo, per la sua autenticità e per il suo legame con il territorio. Uh, il territorio del Salento, un territorio baciato uh, ai due estremi dai due mari, lo Ionio e l'Adriatico, che uh, regalano a questa terra sapidità. The two dominant things that stand out on the Salento Peninsula are old olive trees and abandoned plantations, which are also known locally as a massaria. While several people have converted these old farms into wineries or hotels, many are still abandoned. They make a great opportunity to approve tourism in the region. One winery has taken advantage of these structures, Santi Dimitri. It's another estate that has long produced bulk wine and has now began to focus on bottled wine. Proprietors Carlo Martin and Eduardo Vallone meet us. <laughs> Carlo Martin shows us around the estate and wine shop before we start the tasting. Santi Dimitri's portfolio includes fresh and easy drinking wines made from local grapes, in addition to Fiano. Carlo Martin talks about the new trends he sees in wine consumers. Customers are uh, more educated in terms of wine knowledge. And this is important because uh, it's also uh, this is a challenge for all the producers yeah. to increase quality. The Santi Dimitri Fiano immediately catches our attention. We start with two recent vintages. Also this thing, that this thing bitterness on the finish, but really complemented well and balanced by the fruit still. It still has the prettiness, the freshness, the acidity, the citrus, still a little bit of the floral note, and then round up by honey. Carlo Martin sees our enthusiasm and goes to the cellar to find some older vintages of Fiano. These are fresh wines made in stainless steel, not intended for aging. Salento and Puglia at large aren't known for whites, but these examples are aging surprisingly well. We're all shocked by the Fiano, but now it's time to take a little Santi Dimitri olive oil and focaccia to pair with the red wines. The hospitality and the tasting. While their company has been around for centuries, Santi Dimitri has only begun to bottle wine. We started in 96 with a lot of investment in research and development just to recover the traditional varieties of grapes grown in this area. On the other side, it is important to be contemporary. Wines that can be consumed today. This holds true with the Santi Dimitri sparkling and still rosé wines. Eduardo reveals what he loves to pair these with. On the finish, 
the spiciness, and yes. this really refreshing bitterness on the finish that I absolutely love. That has to do with the Negramaro. Negramaro tends to be quite spicy. <laughs> As I said, it's a dry rosé, so the dry note of the wine matches very well, and the high acidity in the wine matches mm-hmm. very well with the sweeter notes in fish. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's why I personally prefer this kind of pairing. <laughs> The quality revolution from bulk to bottle here is still in its infancy. What does the future hold for Salento wines? It's all in the hands of producers who continue to raise the bar. We like what we've seen on this trip and we can't wait to come back.